Hello everybody and welcome to Armchair Review. Now you're probably thinking, why well, I don't want to watch something that's about reviewing armchairs and whilst this Stradmon from Ikea is a great armchair, that's not what I'm here to do. Today I'm going to be uh, reviewing a, a record player by a company called Victrola. It's the Victrola Empire Junior. It's a record player, radio, Bluetooth speaker, and it has an auxiliary input. But first what I'll do is I'll go through the unboxing with you. Now this is the box that you'll get. The unit's available from Amazon uh, for £129.99. As you can see, there's a picture of the unit on the front there. Very neat. <coughs> mid-century design, um, fairly standard box. What we'll do is we'll take it up onto the table, we'll open it, we'll see what we've got inside, and then we'll set it up and we'll have a listen to it. Okay, so we've got the unit out of its box. Uh, I've set it up. We're going to have a, a look and see what functions it has. Going to listen to it, see what it sounds like, uh, and get an idea of whether we think it's good value for money. What I will say is that in terms of styling, it's certainly better looking than the um, Victorian style uh, offerings from companies like Victrola, GPO, and others. And I think that the mid-century styling is its real big uh, selling point. So what we're going to do now. Uh, is we're going to go through each of the functions um, and have a listen to them um, and see how it operates um, and then come up with a, a final uh, review rating out of five uh, for this particular item. One thing I want to say at this point is that um, as a, a long-term um, lover of hi-fi, uh, collector of vinyl records, I do have a very good um, independent turntable and amplifier set up in another room. It's a Project Debut Carbon. Um, it's an expensive piece of kit, uh, plays records beautifully, um, and that's my baseline for uh, sound quality. However, I'm not going to um, denigrate this particular player uh, in relation to uh, that sound, because the kind of people that will be buying this unit are people who are either uh, new to vinyl, uh, a lot of young people getting back into vinyl, or getting into vinyl for the first time, and then there's other people who are probably my age who had vinyl first time around, who are buying vinyl again, um, but don't want to shell out for an expensive hi-fi separates kit. So these units, they do offer a way back into vinyl for people and they offer a, an entry route into vinyl without having to shell out 300, 400, 500 pounds. Um, and from that point of view, they're very good. One of the things I'll also do is I want to um, put to rest the idea that these cheaper turntables with the plastic Chinese turntable mechanism are in some way going to damage your records. Um, the fact is that the tracking force on most of these is set at around 5 grams. That's not going to damage your records. That's well within the tolerances of a vinyl record. And what I'll do is I will use a, um, a specialised uh, stylus uh, weighing machine to show you that this uh, unit isn't going to damage your vinyls. And so here we've got the unit in situ. Um, one of the things I really like about it is that when you close down the lid, it's all very neat and tidy, smooth. There's a lovely uh, little bit of beveling on the um, lid there that makes this into um, a very attractive um, flat surface. Um, you've got uh, your knobs here for your control knobs. This is your on and off and your um, volume control. In the middle here on this beautiful dial here, this is the FM tuner. It's FM only, there's no AM. 
um, and there's absolutely no um, uh, DAB or anything like that. You'll also notice there's no digital displays on the front. That's one of my favourite things about this particular item. Um, it doesn't kind of betray its uh, modern interior by having anything there that's uh, likely to distract you. And on this side you have your selector knob which goes from uh, FM radio, Bluetooth, uh, auxiliary and phono. Just alongside here there's a tiny auxiliary on one of the uh, small 2.5mm uh, jacks um, for you to plug a phone in or an iPod or something similar. I won't be making any use of that but um, it's a nice extra feature to have. I wish it had been on the back um, but that's, um, uh, that's what they've decided to do here. There's also uh, two phono outputs on the back so you can send the output from this device into uh, a fully fledged separate amplifier. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to sit, select the FM radio. I've already pre-tuned this and I'm going to switch the unit on. And you can see there themselves to answer is whether that the um, interest rate the lights on the dial uh, come on, a lovely kind of orangey glow. This is one of my favourite aspects of this unit in terms of its visual appeal. Very neat, very tidy, but that glow just adds to the kind of um, mid-century effect. Rather good quality sound from the uh, FM stereo uh, radio. Two speakers there at the front, obviously not in wide enough apart for real stereo separation, uh, but certainly a decent quality tuner. Now the main thing that most people will be buying this for will be the record player, so what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the record player in action. Lovely little clip there that holds the um, uh, um, lid open. Got the Victrola uh, logo written on the inside there, stenciled on the inside in gold lettering. It looks really quite classy actually considering um, the cost of this item. Now, the deck on this, the record deck, is your typical Chinese uh, plastic one-piece part with an integrated tone arm. Um, there's no counterweight, um, but um, the uh, tracking force is set by a spring built into the tone arm. Generally speaking, uh, these are reasonably good quality and a reasonably good um, reproduction. But what we'll do is we'll put a, a record on uh, and have a quick listen. Now, even though this is an old Joe Loss plays Glenn Miller LP, I'm not sure if it's going to be copyright protected, so I can only play you uh, a short excerpt from it. So, looking at the unit, let's uh, switch it to phono and switch it on. You can see the tone arm assembly here. This is the platter. The cutout at the back there is so that uh, you can fit full 12 inch records on there. Over at the back here, there's a, a queuing arm. And there's a speed selector there, uh, 33, 45 or 78 RPM. Remember, if you're going to play 78s, you're going to need a proper 3mm uh, stylus. Don't use the stylus that's built uh, into this. You'll need to replace that uh, because you could cause damage to your stylus by playing 78s, which are harder uh, shellac uh, items. I've set the unit to phono, so all we do is we unclip the arm retainer there. We lift up the tone arm, and then this has got an auto start, uh, unlike uh, more uh, high-end hi-fi uh, type turntables. So we simply just move the arm across to where the record is, and we drop that down. Reproduction on that is really quite good. I have to say, playing kind of uh, period records on this really does add to the whole effect. It's got a, an auto stop, but not an auto return, so the tone arm won't return to its uh, point uh, of origin. But uh, when the uh, item, when the tone arm gets to the end of the record, the uh, disc will stop spinning um, and the whole unit will stop. You'll notice as well. The lid can be closed while the record is in there and while it's in operation. The next thing I'd like to show you is the Bluetooth. Now, uh, earlier today I paired um, uh, an Amazon Echo device uh, with this unit um, and 
one of the nice things about this is it remembers what you paired it to um, and the uh, echo device will remember that it's paired to this so as soon as I select Bluetooth we should hear some tones the blue light flashes and that's confirmation that the Bluetooth is connected and now this is effectively used, uh, being used as an Alexa speaker so Alexa play music by Glenn Miller Songs by Glenn Miller from Paddy's Spotify. My latest recording in the mood. <laughs> Alexa, stop. And it's as simple as that. So even if you only use this as a, an Alexa speaker, um, that'd be a fantastic, uh, beautiful looking uh, Alexa speaker. Now, one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to show you that this particular unit is not going to damage your records. I've switched it off because I don't want to engage the um, auto start. What I am going to do is I'm going to bring the tone arm across to the point where the record would be and I'm going to check what the uh, the weight is okay I'm going to measure this with this uh, little measure here to see what the tracking force is and that comes out about 6.8 grams and that's slightly heavy um, but you will have seen a number of uh, articles on YouTube where people have run uh, vinyls through these machines um, extensively to determine how much damage has been caused um, up to tracking forces of 15 and 20 grams um, and the records still play. I would say that if you've got um, vinyl that you're particularly fond of or that's particularly fragile, you might not want to play it uh, in these, but good modern vinyls uh, will be fine in terms of being played occasionally on this unit. So my final verdict on this is it's a really, really good bit of kit. Um, that tracking force of nearly seven grams is a small worry. Um, it's certainly not going to affect um, decent quality records played infrequently. Um, however, it is a little high um, and I may have to do a modification in relation to this one get it down to the five grams, which is what the uh, specified uh, tracking weight is. However, that said, it is a beautiful piece of kit. It's really well finished. Um, this light up dial is gorgeous. Uh, the fit and finish is, is good for the price at 130 quid. Victrola make uh, another model, uh, slightly higher up, it's about 180 pounds, which includes a CD player um, and also a cassette player. Now, the thing with that one is it has a digital display, which I think takes away from the retro look. Um, and also it's more to go wrong. Uh, it's also significantly wider uh, than this unit, so you might have trouble putting that uh, in a, in a uh, tight spot. Um, the cassette loads from the side, so that's not ideal either. Um, if you're looking for um, an entry into uh, owning vinyl or you're going back to vinyl, um, I would say that this is probably a good entry point um, to go in 130 quid is not a huge amount of cash. Um, one point that I didn't mention earlier, instead of a plug top transformer, this has got a three pin kettle lead in the back of it. That means that someone's actually thought uh, a little bit harder about the um, power supply inside it. Um, and that's actually quite encouraging. Um, if you're looking to go up uh, higher towards a separate um, uh, later stage, this might be worth investing in because it does have those phono outs on the back which you can use with an amplifier before you purchase a more expensive deck. Uh, replacement styluses are available for this item. Uh, I think it's about £11 for a packet of three of them. Um, they're not the most, uh, they're not the last word in, in, in high definition, um, but they'll certainly see you through. Um, so all in all, I'm going to give this a thumbs up with that caveat around the tracking weight. It may just be this individual one uh, that's an issue, but I certainly will look at modifying mine. Um, please comment and like below if you want to. Um, let me know what I'm getting right, let me know what I'm getting wrong, and I hope to see you again very soon on the next edition of Armchair Review. Thank you. Bye-bye.